I regretfully inform you that Kami Sato Ayaka and the new continent of Inazuma might not be anywhere near in the future. But what that does mean is that Dendro Heroes, a ton of new combat mechanics, and new gameplay features could be coming very, very soon. What's up guys, it's your boy Damon and welcome back to another Genshin Theory video where we break down all the story, all the secrets, all the stuff that although may sound outlandishly outrageous could also infinitely be true. Today we're going to be talking about the future of Genshin Impact over the course of the next six months all the way up to Inazuma. Now what I thought was that Inazuma initially would come at 1.3 or 1.4, but due to the way the Dragon Spine is unfolding and some other stuff that has been revealed, I don't see Inazuma coming for 1.5, maybe 1.6, maybe even later than that. But the good news is, is if they do intend to wait that long, I think that there could be a lot of stuff that they've been planning on implementing coming a lot sooner than we thought, just due to the way that everything has been structured. Today, I'm going to be addressing things like player housing, character release structure, new elements such as Dendro, and how they could include the mechanics, and how new characters could come into play that we didn't even expect. But first, let's talk about Xiao. I know a lot of you guys have a lot of questions about Xiao. Uh, Xiao is, is, is a really, really big character that a lot of people are focusing on and really, really thinking about. We already knew that Ganyu was coming. And with the fact that Ganyu is coming, Around the second week of January, the rest of the current patch is pretty much laid out. We got a bunch of events that are in front of us, and that will carry us over into 1.3. Now, the big thing is, is my guess before was that Xiao was definitely going to come in 1.3. I was anticipating before that maybe Kamisato Ayaka could come on the long side of Xiao, but that was quickly debunked as now new rumors for characters that could be coming out could definitely appear. A rumor has recently surfaced that a character by the name of Hu Tao who seems to be Zhongli's boss. She is the funeral director in Liyue, and she is known to be a little bit of a prankster. Rumor has it that she's supposed to be a five star that should be coming either before or after Xiao, but we have no idea what she can do just yet. All we know according to Chi Chi is that she's very hot headed and she enjoys playing pranks on people like burying Chi Chi. But what does that mean for us? Meaning that since Inazuma is not coming that soon, I think that the emphasis is going to be more on game mechanics. So things like Dendro Heroes. People are always asking me like, D, when do you think that they're going to introduce the Dendro Heroes? And it's not just a simple matter of just releasing Dendro Heroes. You guys got to understand that they have to uh, release mobs, Dendro variants of monsters. They have to basically release a new Dendro boss. Who knows where they're going to place this boss. And then they have to create a way that you can farm the materials and probably tie an event to it that makes it a lot more accessible to a whole new element structure. Because then now players, if they introduce Dendro, have to learn all new elemental mechanics, new elemental combos, new team comps, you know, all kinds of different things. So it's not as simple as that. However, Due to the fact that Xiao is filler and he's already been in the game for like a year and we already know what Lantern Rite Festival pretty much looks like outside of some minor tweaks or major tweaks that they're probably going to make to the event. What better time would there be than to start to get the coding done or get all the infrastructure in place to get ready for Dendro Heroes? So if I had to guess, even if they don't run any new four stars for 1.3, and all they did was Xiao, old four stars. And let's say, let's imagine for a second they did Hu Tao with old four stars. 1.4 could be ample stomping ground to introduce Dendro characters entirely, especially if they decide to do something like rerun an old character. Like if they try to rerun an old character like Venti or bring Klee back or something like that, then they could easily run an old five star with new four stars, aka Rosaria, who was introduced in the story. They could easily place a new event into the game, give some players an opportunity to summon for those heroes and then introduce a whole new classification of game mechanics to the game as well aka dendro heroes this is where i think we have a higher probability especially since it seems like inazuma is getting further and further away and i'll talk a little bit about that here in a second but looking at how they could space this especially if their plan is to get all of the elements in place before they start to roll out other content per se, meaning getting the Dendro heroes in place, maybe let's say if they decided to add a new weapon type, 
or introduce a system of player housing, which they officially announced back in closed beta test two, which we will also talk about here in a second, then things can start to go a long way. So the reason why I think that Inazuma now, especially looking at Dragon Spine and how they're pacing these characters and now the rumors going around that Hu Tao could be coming out, and then we still have to get Rosaria and Rosaria is nowhere to be found. We also still have at least four characters, one, two, three, four, that haven't even been touched yet. So you guys probably already realized by now that pretty much every character, 100% of the characters that are talked about in the voice options are coming out. All right, so the characters in question are of course, Yunjin, Baizu, Yao Yao, and of course, Hu Tao, which if these characters are already slated and they're already pretty much holding their slot in the story, meaning they already play a role, these are four characters, assuming that two of them are five stars and two of them are four stars, that can already basically fill out an entire update all by themselves. Not to mention that two of those heroes, Baizu and Yao Yao, are Dendro element accordingly. So if they were to tie both of those heroes into an individual update, aka 1.4 or 1.5, that would be enough to stretch an entire update because players would have to learn all new mechanics, whole new story, character elemental combos, that they would have to put together that would probably take this game to a completely different level. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised to start seeing more Abyss Floors added, harder content added, especially as we start to shift to the 45 to 50 adventure rank focus. Not to mention, there'll be a slew of new artifacts added to the game, new weapons, new tasks to conquer, and these are, I think, the fundamental things that they have to get in place before Inazuma even launches. Because I'm sure once Inazuma comes out, they don't want to be worrying about whether or not they should add an element or whatever. They want to just add new characters. And speaking of new elements, back in closed beta test 2, there was a picture that was revealed, and there was just some silhouettes of some characters. We weren't able to confirm if any of these silhouettes were true, but what, what they did confirm at the time was the names associated were true, they just didn't match any of the silhouettes. And if I could draw your attention to the middle, you guys will see a kind of uh, a brawny, muscular kind of guy with a green outline. And assuming that these elements represent the elements of the characters that could easily be a dendro hero from Mondstadt by the name of Varka. Now, for those of you guys who paid attention to the lore, Varka basically went up to Dragonspine and got lost. Lo and behold, where are we at? Dragonspine. They still have another character that has yet to be revealed. Child mentions him in his storyline. And Varka was basically the Grand Master before Jean took up that mantle. So, not only do we have that with the four characters that could take up a whole patch by themselves with just those four characters, we also have Varka and another character by the name of Alice, who was recently introduced in Mona's storyline. If you guys remember that, if not, you guys can look at the screen and the quest highlights if you guys weren't here for that. And she was also mentioned a second time in Albedo's story. Now, the big thing here is understanding that Alice is coming into play. She's a very, very key character. And the reason why I say that is because she's Klee's mom, all right? And they don't mention these characters in passing. Now, although Alice wasn't, you know, really mentioned in any of the voice lines, meaning that maybe she's not here just yet, she could may very well be part of the main story and could eventually be playable. The reason I say that is because now that they tied Klee into the story, they tied us into Dragonspine, both Alice and Varka tie into this entire story arc, it's going to lead us to a whole new level. And since Varka actually is a chat option, I wouldn't be surprised if he does end up being playable especially as a Dendro hero, which would unlock a whole new slew of features for Genshin Impact. So, while they're getting all this stuff together and tying in the story and taking us for loops and introducing new characters, this is, I think, where a great time for them to introduce the player housing system that was officially announced six months ago. There was a post that the letter wrote from the producer where he said that player housing definitely would be a thing. Um, and it was called the Homeland system. And so now with the Homeland system, if it's similar to other player housing systems, I wouldn't be surprised if they had a system that was implemented where you get to build buildings or whatever, and maybe use your primo gems to like level it up or something like that. Or if it's just like your house and you're able to manage a garden and grow crops or violet grass for those of you guys who hate to farm violet grass or have ways to cook your own food or gather materials to make your travel around Teyvat a lot easier. So now as they implement all these new 
characters, new content, you know, over the course of 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, and we start to prep for Inazuma, maybe 1.6 or 1.7, I think there's an even bigger reason why Inazuma is taking even longer. So a big thing here, and <laughs> I want to kind of close the video off with this one, because uh, this is kind of a big deal. Um, as you guys know, MiHoYo made a successful game called Honkai Impact before. Uh, with Honkai Impact, Honkai Impact was like their initial flagship, um, and then Genshin Impact was basically the spinoff, uh, well, basically the next level up from that. Now, if I could draw your attention, I'd tease the screenshot uh, in the previous video that I made. But if you guys are looking in the screenshot, there are seven characters in Kamisato Ayaka's dialogue from Closed Beta Test 1. So this is fair game, because there was no non-disclosure on any of this. But in Closed Beta Test 1, they had featured a character um, in, in her voice line that was Yae Sakura, right? So I want to send a special shout out to the Discord because somebody had post, uh, sent me a message in the Discord letting me know, like, yo, D, that's actually a character, like, dead on from Honkai Impact. <clears throat> so if you guys are looking at the footage in front of you right now, um, this is actually a character from Honkai Impact. And you guys can see how crazy, ridiculous these animations are as these characters evolve. So if it's something as crazy as us going to Inazuma and then eventually getting a crossover with characters like this that you guys can see, and here are some more examples of characters from Honkai Impact that you can see, and it only makes perfect sense to me that they would decide to include these characters in there because of the simple fact that it's they own the IP, right? They own both of the games. Why not tie them in together, introduce some of the coolest characters from Honkai Impact, and then tie in the lore? There was already some information before where Dvalin, um, basically Storm Terror, tied into the lore in a previous video that they made right around launch time, where they talked about how Dvalin was kind of like a concept and they were kind of tying it together. And if you look at Honkai Impact artwork, you'll see characters that were recently released that resemble other characters like Faisal. Yeah so on and so forth. At the end of this, even after we finally arrive in Inazuma, we finally get Kamisato, they're already looking at tying in other worlds to Genshin Impact. So the future of Genshin Impact, player housing, new bosses, difficult content, potentially even guilds now that they're fine-tuning the social system. We will have entire universes that we can basically mesh with and, and conquer quests or discover secrets or create adventures while we explore these new territories, worlds, and or characters. All in all, I think there's a ton of stuff coming to Genshin Impact, and I don't think that most of us are even ready for it, which is why they're pacing this content in a way that allows us to, to take it one little step at a time. But as we go through this and we talk about these subjects and, and we theory craft and talk about how everything is going to or how I think everything is going to happen in Genshin Impact, I'm excited to see how exactly they will unfold. But anyway, guys, uh, that's all I wanted to cover today. Let all the stuff that we talked about today kind of sit on your brain and let me know what you think about this in the comment box below. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy Damone and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.